My name is Ranger Jack from Historic Yates Mill County Park. Happy World Turtle Day. We are going to be reading two books together. The first is Box Turtle on Long Pond at Long Pond. And then there's also Emma's Turtle. So we have um, a great time. I hope you guys are doing well out there in TV land. So um, the first book is Box Turtle at Long Pond. It is dawn at Long Pond. A white mist covers the water. Little warblers awaken and fly from the tall pine trees to the blueberry bushes below. They dart to the pond's edge and take long sips of water. Something moves by the rotten birch log. All the birds are still. The log itself seems to come alive. The frightened songbirds fly off to the treetops. A head with red eyes appears from within the crumbling tree. It is a box turtle. He has burrowed into the log to stay warm during the cold autumn night. It's got red eyes. The turtle slowly makes his way down to the pond like Yates Mill. He carefully stretches out his neck to drink. Box turtles cannot swim. The turtle crawls to a favorite spot where wild grapes grow. He spends half the morning looking for fallen grapes, but only finds three. There is a rustling in the leaves. The box turtle looks around and sees a chipmunk with a big grape in its mouth. The sun is high overhead, and the morning chill is gone. The turtle looks from, for a rock out in the open fields and basks in the hot sun. He closes his eyes, but he's still aware of the sounds around him. Gray clouds move in. A breeze turns over the leaves on the maple trees. The box turns Box Turtle opens his eyes and he senses rain and heads uphill. The turtle finds shelter under an old apple tree. It rains most of the afternoon. The rain stops and the sun comes out. The heavy rains have driven the worms out of their holes in the ground. Some have crawled onto the large rock. As quickly as he can, the box turtle bites the heads off of each squirming worm. Then he goes back to eat them one by one. A young raccoon walks onto the stone. She is also looking for worms. The box turtle sees her and quickly draws himself up into his shell. The raccoon turns him over but cannot pry the shell open with his little fingers. She eats the worms and wanders off. What nice shelter he has. The box turtle listens and waits. Hearing nothing, he opens his eyes and then sticks out his head. The raccoon is gone. He turns himself over and the worms are gone too. The sun is dropping in the sky. The air is getting cooler. The turtle is still hungry and crawls towards grapevines. Suddenly he stops. A grasshopper is perched on a blade of grass. The turtle opens his jaws and lunges, but the grasshopper jumps away. When he reaches the vines, the box turtle hears a thrashing sound. A grouse is hitting the grapes with its wings, the fruit is falling everywhere. Another grouse is feeding on the ground. He is frightened by the turtle and flies away. The box turtle eats grapes until he is full. The sun sets on the far side of Long Pond. The evening air grows colder. The box turtle burrows in the soft pine needles. 
to stay warm and closes his eyes. It has been a long day. And that is the box turtle at Long Pond. Our next addition to our story reading time is Emma's turtle. By Eve Bunting. I am Emma's turtle. I live in a pen in her backyard. Emma visits me often and brings me snacks. I let her stroke my head. She sits in her swing and reads to me of the world and places that are far, far away. She shows me pictures of elephants in Africa, kangaroos in Australia. There are tigers in India and panda bears in China. It is, a, it is all quite amazing. My life is good, but I often dream of the world that is far, far away. One day, I tell myself to stop dreaming and go. I dig a hole under the wire of my pen and squeeze out. I am walking in this place I'd never walked before. My legs are short and the grass is long. I think it must be a jungle. Perhaps I am in Africa. Is that an elephant leg in front of me? Oh, I am going to be squished. No, it is a stump, some strange jungle tree I plod on. I've come so far now that I think this must be Australia. Is that a kangaroo leaping through the grassland? No, it's a frog, but since it is Australian frog. It is very interesting. Frogs certainly move fast. I hear bells chime. Ah, they must be temple bells, and this must be India. Yikes, is that a tiger? I put my two shells together because he's an Eastern so he can't eat me. But when I pop, peep out, I see it is just a silly striped cat from next door. I never knew he sometimes visited India. An Indian beetle watches me. He looks exactly like other beetles I've known. We, have, we are eyes to eyes. It's nice here in India, I tell him but come to visit me in the United States. It is nice there too. I may do that, says Beetle. I gaze around. Do you know where the United States is from here? Sorry, he crawls off. I am worried. I have come so far. Will I be able to find my way home? Will I have to stay in India forever? A voice is calling, Turtle! Turtle, where are you? Hooray, it's my Emma. I am here in India, I say, but I am using turtle talk and she doesn't understand. She sees me and picks me up. Thank goodness I found you, thank goodness. It is so good to be off my feet. I let her stroke my head. She has brought me a snail for me in her pocket. It is fat and juicy and splendid. Emma carries me back and sets me in my pen. Strawberry slices are scattered about for my supper. I am tired, but I can still eat. Emma leans across my wire fence. Poor turtle, she croons. I bet it took you all day to go from one end of our yard to the other. I hope it was exciting for you. Did I really only go from one end of the yard to the other? Astonishing. Still, it is, ex it is exciting to have the whole world here in my backyard. I settle to sleep. A traveling turtle needs his rest. Tomorrow I will dig another hole. I need to go again and find China.
Thank you. You guys have a great day.